All right, we're going to take a quick break from the questions. Tonight on Homework Hotline, we would like to, uh, we have the new director of the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, Ward Stair. Congratulations. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Bob Great Tommy. to be here. Fantastic. So now we kind of had a side conversation. What is the difference between a director and the conductor of an orchestra? That's a really good question because there's something called a music director who does a lot more than just conduct the concerts. The, right. mu the music director also does conduct concerts, but part of uh, the job of music director is looking after the overall vision for the orchestra okay. in terms of the, the direction we want to go artistically, in terms of growing the orchestra, uh, and by that I mean um, making the, the level better and better and better and okay. working on the style and how we practice you yep. know, and we rehearse. Um, but also going out in the community and making connections with, with different organizations, making partnerships with other arts uh, organizations okay. and, and even non-artistic organizations. So just you know, working on all the things that happen off the stage, that's really in some ways the biggest job that a music director has in terms of a time commitment. Sure. Uh, and then of course the nuts and bolts uh, or the, the bread and butter is, wh is what I do on stage when you see uh, the rehearsals and the performances. So right. it's a very uh, complicated, multifaceted job very cool. of being music director. Now, how did you discover music? You know, w did you grow up in a musical family? How did I did? Yeah, I was. Um, I'm the only professional musician in my family, but my whole oh. family is very musical. Right. So I always had a lot of music uh, growing up around me. And I actually remember when I was about five years old, one weekend when uh, I was playing around in the living room and I saw uh, the record cabinet, and my father had all these records. Uh, and I, I was asking him questions about it, and when he told me that these, uh, these big black things, you know, play music, <laughs> do you want to hear one, he said. And so I just picked one randomly, <laughs> and it happened to be a Beethoven symphony. Right. And I remember I sat there, and I listened to the whole thing. And even though it was a five, I was only five years old, I still remember the general sure. atmosphere. You know, I have an impression of that still. Right. And I was hooked from that moment on. I just, I kept asking him to hear more sure. of that music, and, and I really... Just and I think it. I think as parents, that's a big thing with kind of any education is you that's fuel right. what your kids are interested in. You don't know where it's going to go. And here you are now, the director of yes. Rochester. Now, you've and gone other places as well as other directors. Is that true? What about some of those? Well, my first position as a conductor was with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, where I was a, a fellow with the League of American Orchestras. So I was uh, basically like an assistant uh, conductor. So I got to watch a lot of great people and help wow. out. And then I was the resident conductor with the St. Louis Symphony in wow. St. Louis, Missouri for four years, which was a really wow. wonderful experience experience. Uh, and then uh, for the last two years I've been living in Chicago and guest conducting kind of all over the world. Guest cool. conducting is when you come for just a week right. and you work with the orchestra. Or if it's an opera it might be a couple months but you only do one set of concerts or one production right. and, and then you move on. Very cool. Oh wow. Um, what, what are some of the steps like that you took to get from high school to where you are now? Well I, um, I, I played in the youth orchestra well, the Rochester Philharmonic Youth Orchestra, which was really a great experience because I got to play all this great symphonic repertoire uh, for the first time. And then I, I studied uh, outside of high school at the Community Ed Division at Eastman School of Music, took a lot of private lessons, and then I actually uh, did high school in three years uh, and went to conservatory early uh, and was there for two years before I got my first job. So it, music can be a little bit um, sort of uh, the opposite of a lot of other careers because right. if you go through quickly and get the opportunities, if they present themselves at the right time, it's kind of about timing. And if you have the opportunity to play at a high level, you take it rather than you know waiting for your degree. So that's what I did, but I got a lot of great experience along the way. Cool. Now, when you said conservatory, you meant Juilliard? I went to Juilliard, yeah, okay. in New York City. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, being the conductor of uh, the Philharmonic Orchestra, that's not the only kind of music that you listen to, right? That's right. I mean, it yeah. is. I mean, so you have like your favorites of like pop and hip hop and stuff like that. How does that influence like what you're going to do with the orchestra for like you were saying, you know, you're looking at the grand picture of what the orchestra, where they're heading. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really great question because uh, I always say there are only two kinds of music. And this is, this is a quote that's been used quite a bit. There's good music and bad music. Right. So, And I really believe that. I always have an open mind about it. So um, a lot of my personal collection is, of course, related to what I work on, you know, operas, classical music, jazz, things like that. Uh, but I love to turn on the radio and just listen to pop music because music is really about communication and sure. it's about connecting with people. So I'm always interested to see what, what you know, most of the population is listening to what's popular on the radio and you know like I know there's a lot of Taylor Swift just to, got, came out with a new song and oh. Katy Perry and oh. Beyonce and things like that and so I, I love to sort of keep try to keep my finger on the pulse there sure. uh, and and a lot of those things you know things like rhythm you can relate that back to classical yep. music melody certainly so there are a lot of commonalities. Cool. Do you do anything like as you're, when you're 
designing the program for this season? Anything that might draw in students of, that watch the show and things like that that Ooh. would bring them to want to listen? Because a lot of our kids don't listen. No, not to, to that. classical or right. you know. You know right. So well, there's always uh, there's always a pre-concert lecture. So that uh, and I come out on stage for my concerts and I give uh, I give kind of a little sneak peek, like a preview of what yep. to listen for. But in terms of the programs themselves, I always try to put something on the program that's going to be familiar, mm -hmm. especially as we build a relationship. Because um, when you have a new music director with a new orchestra and a new community, it's really about building trust. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know that when you come to see the Rochester Philharmonic, you'll recognize something on the program probably, or you'll be able to whistle it in the car on the way home. <laughs> okay. It's not too intimidating. So I look for a nice balance where you can find something that you can immediately relate to and grab onto, and then maybe something you haven't heard before that'll, that'll give yep. you a flavor of something different. So you walk away with a, an overall experience that's uh, both familiar and new and, and exciting. Excellent. So now, going with that, that you, you're, you're tapping into what we know and what we might want to listen to, how does the Philharmonic and how does your preference to music play into everyday life? Well, I think for me, music is always going through my head and, and every single day. But, um, you know, music is something that you can keep in your life in, in an, any number of ways. You don't have to be a professional musician to say that you have music in your life. My sister is a good example. We both grew up in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a very good string bass player. She played the piano. She considered going to music school, but at the end of the day, she decided that maybe a different path was right for her. Right. Um, and she's now an attorney ah. right here in Rochester. Sure. Uh, and she's a fantastic attorney, but she still plays. She still loves music. So you can appreciate it. You can come to concerts. You can just enjoy it as a listener. You can be a supporter, a patron, a donor. There are all sorts of ways you can have music in your life, but I think it's important to have it because it opens up an area of your your soul really sure, sure. That, that you don't always get to use especially in a society where we're, we're glued to our smartphones yes. and always looking at screens <laughs> yeah, music yeah. is something where even if you happen to be listening to it through a device like that mm -hmm. you can close your eyes and let your mind just go wherever the music takes you and that's a very beautiful thing to very keep nice. in your life very nice now you said you've traveled a lot mm -hmm. what were some of the best parts of the cities that when you travel like you just come back to Rochester and you know we had a little conversation that you haven't even really touched everything that's here right, um, right. as you've been traveling and doing different things what are some of the things like in Rochester that you really enjoy seeing again being back well I always loved uh, you know just coming up I, I love Eastman Theater and Kodak Hall I just think it's such an iconic building and okay. I, I had so many formative experiences down there when I was very young and you know Gibbs Street and Java Joe's the whole area around there was was something that I was very familiar with from a very early age so that always has kind of a uh, feeling of nostalgia oh. and homecoming, okay, yes. Yeah. But also, since I grew up in Pittsburgh, you know, the canal, I love yeah. that. It's very beautiful, scenic down there. Of course, Wegmans, you know, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny, but uh, when, I, when I go all over the world and all over the country, anyone, if they say they're from Rochester, the test to tell if they're telling the truth is whether or not they know about Wegmans. Sure. And everyone loves Wegmans all over the country, so. Now, you were saying um, also with music that you almost went in a different vein, but you've had experiences and been exposed to different things. So what about you almost were like a mathematician, designer, engineer, you were saying? Well, actually, I wouldn't say that. I've always been interested in things like that. My father was a chemical engineer, and so when I was coming through high school uh, and I decided to, to finish in three years, uh, I didn't take the most advanced math and science and right. you know physics, calculus, sure. things like that, which I found very fascinating, and I would have loved to have done that, but music was just drawing me And you were uh, just like quickly. you said, it presented something and you went with it. It was you? an opportunity, and I took it, and, uh, and I think I wouldn't have done it any other way. Uh, but the great thing about music for me as a conductor uh, is that I get to investigate all sorts of other things. I recently conducted an opera, for example, in St. Louis, which deals with a subject around the French Revolution. And we were, as, as I was preparing for it and thinking about it conceptually, I started reading a lot about the French Revolution. And so you never know what sort of historical sure. or even scientific yeah. things will yeah. come into That's play true. when you're preparing, because I need to have a context and a vision and sort of, uh, you know, to help inform my interpretive yep. approach to the piece. So I find that I, it's a great career because I get to touch on all sorts of nice. different areas yeah. of life. If you had one thing you would really like to tell the students out there that are watching mm -hmm. about um, music or just in general about following your dreams, what mm -hmm. would that be? Well, following your dreams is a big, really important one. I think uh, if you like music, uh, go for it and play and, and experiment with music. I mean, find out if, if you 
know that you have an ear for music, but maybe you don't like the violin, try the cello or try the piano and seek out musicians too, because I know especially in Rochester, there's so many generous musicians yes. in, yeah, in, the, in the public schools, but also from the Rochester Philharmonic and a lot of people willing to talk to you. I mean, I love being stopped in the grocery store and <laughs> a answering questions. I do. We're very approachable. And um, so I think music is such a beautiful thing, and I think uh, your life is, is not complete without it. So I would encourage every student to explore music. Fantastic. Ward, we'd like to thank you very much for coming on, well, and we hope you come back again. Me. Thank you. Thanks so much. Excellent. All right, we would like to thank Ward for being here today. If you would like to know more about the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, go to their website, rpo.org. And stay right there. We'll be back in a minute.